Hey guys, there's my five eat transmission. Hi, right, son. Could you uh, be my cameraman today? It's running. All right, I turned on the humidifier. All right, so this is my five EAT transmission. I got a mounted to an engine stand. I took the the torque converter just slips off, so you can kind of roly poly it around as needed. So this is my three hundred twenty eight dollar transmission off eBay, and I bought it from my I bought it for the valve body, which has the rain sensor in it. And the rain sensor error was showing up on the OBD2 codes. So I'm going to take the valve body out of here. Come on closer, Anthony. Let's get a shot of that valve body. Which so portion? I've already taken most of these screws out ahead of time to look at what we got. So now here's my valve body. Can you see that, Anthony? The first thing I'm going to do is take the air... Transmission filter off. You see it's held on by that one. That one. It looks like one more. Okay. Now I don't know if any of those bolts are also holding the valve body. But what the heck. Oh, now another thing to notice about this. It has about 120,000 miles. It's 2012. And look at how clean that magnet is. Yeah, there's some fine, uh, fine, uh, metal filings but boy are they fine talk about Japanese engineering I mean you take a car from the 80's you get that all full of chunks of metal little bits of pieces of everything it's remarkable how technological wizardry is happening here alright so apparently in my observations the manufacturer has done the mechanic a favor by color coding the bolts you need to take out. Oops, I used to, I gotta watch what I'm doing. Well, actually, that's a bolt that has to come out. But it wasn't one of the transmission. So, the transmission and the bolts are pretty short. I don't know if that's, they're actually used or involved in taking the valve body out, but I'm just gonna take them out anyhow. I guess for superstitious reasons, you may not actually have to do this. <clears throat> All right. So is everything okay, son? He's not talking. So that's a good cameraman not to interrupt the show. All right. There you go. Come out. So there you go. Rubber O-ring seal into that hole. All right. So what I found on taking out. The valve body from the broken valve body. Now the only reason why it's broken is, well, I'm getting a, a rain sensor error. So there's your rain sensor. As your as your gear shifter lever changes, you see that moving. It slides a uh, something against something. It's Hall effects and magnetism. Anyways, it tells where the position of that is. It sends and tells you where your gear is. All right. So these two bolts are involved in holding your valve body at least as I understood it so I'm gonna go ahead and take those out those are the only bolts see they're quite long so they go down deep they go down and hold on to something they're the only shiny whitish colored bolts the rest are dark in color so if it's not those two, and it's not dark, don't take it out. So let's get busy. We got a one, a two, a three. I'm gonna have to get a torque press. Four to put these back on. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, my ratchet's going bad, so it's not the bolt. Nine, ten, eleven, eleven dark bolts. All right, now that they're loose, I can zip them off. None of those noisy air wrenches needed. And zip them off. There they go. One, 
Do you have a compartment or a container so that you don't lose these? Yeah. So YouTubers at home, my son says put these in a container so you don't lose them. Fortunately, I think they're all the same length. We'll lay them against each other as we take them out. Yep, still the same length. So we don't have to worry about that. I'm pretty sure on the younger year, you know, like 2005, of course, is younger than 2012. It wasn't so mechanical friendly. But nowadays, everything's more foolproof. Either the mechanics got dumber, so you had to make it easier on them. Or they just made it easier on them because that's, that's progress, right? Making the world easier. Yeah, I mean, like in the old days, automatic transmissions used to burn up more gas, and it was the manual transmissions which were more efficient. But nowadays, it's the other way around, because the, manu the automatics can shift just the right, and then the, the linkage is all, uh, they can lock it up, so you don't lose anything to friction in the, they call that spinning thing, the torque converter. All right, so I leave those alone. It's only the dark ones. Boy, look at all those I, I'm going to leave alone because they're not dark. Only taking out the dark ones. Of course, the proof of the pudding is if this suddenly starts getting loose. If it's not, then everything I've said so far is trash. I'm going to find out soon enough if I can lift this up. But... Of course we got some wiring connections, a total of four harnesses or four pluggy pluggies. Four pluggy pluggies. <clears throat> Dad, how can you manage to say that my two hundred dollar moped that I want that simply quote needs a clean new carburetor isn't a good deal though we shouldn't spring for it, but you've already spent over a thousand dollars on this Subaru and you're still fixing it up. It's good YouTube content, but is it a good deal? Got a good point there, son. So there's connection number one. Mm -hmm. Connection one, green. Here's two here. So you push down on whatever clips they got, so re the release clips. Sometimes those are hard to figure out, but so far these are kind of obvious. You push where you think you're supposed to push, and I just saw the valve body move. I think the valve body's loose, which is also a bad sign. Um, is there a certain lineup procedure that you need to do? Hopefully that would, that would be done by pins, but I just saw it slide. All right, now this is held down by pins. This isn't a computer board. This is uh, a, a quarter-inch size pin that will lock, let this slide. So hopefully those uh, screws are adequate to hold them in the right position. So we got the wiring harness out of the way. Wiring harness one and wiring harness two. Oh, don't grease the connector pins. All right, this is natural. This modern transmission fluid has quite the odor. Kind of weird. I hope it's not toxic. I didn't read anything on my bottle saying toxic stuff. All right, is it ready to pull out? Now, obviously, if I pull out, things have to line back up when I put it back on. There must be some rain sensor interface I got to watch out for. And I think there's a speed sensor down there somewhere. All right, let's see if I can pull it out. Hey. Look at that, it comes right out. And the, the hidden side, like the opposite side of the moon. What do we got here? We got some kind of speed sensor, I think, so we gotta be careful of that. And we have to treat this super delicately, like it's a baby. Um, because you don't wanna flop it down and have a break. Where are you gonna put it? It's dripping with grease. It's not grease, it's called transmission fluid. So Trend. there's what Ugh. the tranny looks like. There's your gear lever shifter, it's got some rod and stuff. Lots of little holes, I guess that's how it communicates with, and of course, solenoids. Lots solenoids? of solenoids. It's all controlled by a computer these days. All the wiring goes out through that little plug there, looks like. There you go, for this entire $328 machine, with, you know, it's in great condition for that price. All I want out of it is the rain sensor, but I might as well just take the valve body with it. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching for your next episode of Stranger, ranger, car, danger. Yeah, we'll see where we get my mouth pad.